Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives, uh, still on our electrotechnics and for working with the transformers. In this case, we shall be focusing on the transformer concept from our April uh, 2021 question paper, whereby we were given the first part of our question, uh, 4.1, what are the two types of single phase transformer windings in this case? What are the two types of uh, single phase uh, uh, transformer windings in this case? So take note there, we talk of uh, the core type, uh, we have the core type, in this case, which is uh, with the concentric windings in this case, all right, with uh, concentric, all right, that's concentric windings. We also have a condition whereby we are dealing with the shell type. So these are the two types that we have. We also have the shell type uh, with sandwich windings this time, all right, with uh, sandwich windings, all right. So these are the two uh, types of uh, the two types of uh, single phase transformer windings that we have: the core type uh, and the shell type, and uh, their corresponding windings. In this case, four point two, we are given a single phase fifty hertz transformer. Uh, it has twenty primary turns and two seventy three secondary turns. In this case, all right, the cross sectional area of the core is. Uh, 400 square centimeters if the primary windings is connected to 224 supply. All right, calculate this. All right, so let's see. Uh, it's a single phase that is the most important part to take note. Uh, okay, having a frequency of uh, 50 hertz uh, in this case, then we've got the primary tens and uh, 20 primary tens and 273 tens in this case. So meaning to say on the primary, we have got uh, 20 tens in this case, then on the secondary, we have got uh, 273 uh, tens. Then uh, the net cross-sectional area of the core in this case is uh, given as uh, 400 square centimeters. Remember I told you guys to convert uh, an area from square centimeters to square meters, you multiply by 10 to the exponent of minus two. Also, we are given if the primary winding is connected to a 220 volt supply, meaning to say we are given V1 as 220 volt uh, supply. Calculate 4.1, the peak value of the flux density in the core. So take note of what you are given there. We are supposed to calculate the peak value of the flux density, meaning to say we are talking about the maximum flux density, peak value, maximum flux density in this case. All right. Where we can obtain the maximum flux density, it must correspond with maximum flux. The same thing, if you are talking about the maximum flux, it must correspond to the maximum flux density. So meaning to say, in order for you to be thinking of this maximum flux density, you must be thinking of the maximum flux at the same time. Because we know that these two are related. These two are related. That is uh, the magnetic flux density is the one that we are supposed to calculate the magnetic flux density is taken from flux over area. If it is maximum, this must also be maximum. So where can we obtain the maximum flux? Because we do not have a condition that can give us maximum flux density direct. We think of our EMF equation. Uh, from our EMF equation, remember that E is equal to 4,44 times frequency times the maximum flux times the number of turns. So meaning to say we can calculate the maximum flux, then use it to calculate our maximum flux density. So here we are given V1. So if this is E1, this is supposed to be N1. If we are given E2, we use N2 in this case. All right, so remember we want to calculate the maximum flux. So you're gonna make this the subject. Uh, so it's going to be E1 over, we divide by 4,44 by frequency and also by the number of tens, so that was going to give us the maximum uh, flux in this case, E being the voltage of the primary E1, 220. So let us substitute our information here. We are going to have 220 over 4,44 times the frequency in that case, our frequency being of 50 Hertz times N1, which is 20. So this is going to give us uh, the maximum flux, not 
maximum flux density but the maximum flux in this case so our maximum flux was going to be something like 0, uh, 0,495 in Webers in this case. All right. With our maximum flux, like I said, we can use it now to calculate the maximum flux density. Since maximum flux density, it's maximum flux over area. So therefore now calculate maximum flux density. All right, so we are going to calculate maximum flux density whereby the maximum flux density is taken from the maximum flux over the area. So we have in this case, the maximum flux from our EMF equation that is 0, 0,0495 over the area. We are taking the area from our core in this case, from the core, our area is 400 square centimeters. We have to convert this area to square meters, we simply multiply by 10 to the exponent of uh, negative four. I explained this part here on our video for resistivity, if you still remember. So that is going to be 400 times 10 to the exponent of minus four. If it was in a square millimeters, you multiply by 10 to the exponent of minus six to convert to square meters, whatever value that you're going to uh, be given there. So this was going to give us the maximum flux density of 1,238 uh, Tesla in this case. Remember, our maximum flux density is measured in Tesla. Maximum flux, uh, from maximum flux, you calculate maximum flux density. That was uh, the play around of our question. All right, so as you can see, they just wanted to play around with us here. But now they're saying the voltage induced in the primary uh, in the secondary winding in this case. So for this one, we can play around with the information. We need the voltage in the secondary. So we can play around with this information that we have from our information. We need to calculate V2. Remember the ratio between the number of turns voltage can give us uh, the value of any unknown. Uh, here we have got uh, N1 and N2. So we can use V1 over V2 is equal to N1 over N2. Yes, you could have used the EMF equation. You make N2 this. If you use E2, you are going to work with the N2. So, but it's going to be a lot here. We can just use the basic one, V1 over V2, whereby our V1, it's a 220 over V2. In this case, it's the one that we are supposed to calculate uh, V2 in this case. All right, this thing of using same marker, all right, let me indicate this way. All right, so we are supposed to calculate V2. So it's going to be over V2 is equal to N1, which is 20 in this case over N2, which is uh, 273 tenths. So we want to calculate uh, V2 so we can do our cross multiplication in this case. So that's V2 times 20, which is 20. V2 is equal to, we multiply two, 120 times 273. So in order to calculate the voltage on the second R, which is our V2, we are simply going to divide by 20 in this case. So at the moment, we are dividing by 20. In this case, we are obtaining uh, the voltage that is uh, on the second R in this case. That was going to be 3,003 uh, volts in this case. So that's 3,003 or 3,003 uh, kilovolts. Voltage can also be written in terms of kilo. That is the kilo units in this case. All right, so that was our question on 4.22. 4.23, we are now asked to calculate the voltage per 10, the voltage per 10. So if it is the voltage per 10, it's gonna depend with which voltage. If you use voltage one, you use N1. If you use V2, you use N2. So the voltage per 10 is simply taken from the ratio that we are given between per 10, that is voltage per, per if we talk about per 10 voltage per, per, per number of tens, that is, it can be uh, N1 or it can be N2, uh, depending with which part that you are going to refer, but it's simply voltage over number of tens, that is the voltage per 10, all right? So we can simply have this as uh, the voltage, the voltage per 10, in this case, uh, in actual sense, can be given from V1 over N1. Or we can have this from V2 
over N2. We must have the same thing. So in this case, I'm gonna use the first one, which is a V1 over N1. We have direct from what we are given. Remember, it is us who calculated V2. Maybe it is wrong. It is going to be, it is going to give you a wrong answer, but to use the values that you already you are given, you already given 220 for V1 and N1, we are already given. So this is 220 volts uh, over 20 tens in this case. So if we divide, we are going to remain with 11 volt per 10 in this case, that is 11 volt per 10, that is the volt per 10 in this case. All right, so that was the same idea. Even if we are to use our V2, remember uh, we had our V2, which was uh, uh, at the end, we ended up with our V2 being 3000 and three in this case. So even if we are to use uh, the 3003, as long we are dividing to the corresponding value, which is uh, which is the corresponding value is N1, we are supposed to obtain the same thing. So the vote per 10 in this case was going to be even taken from V2 over N2. Remember our V2 was 3003 over N2, which is 273. So we've got uh, volts per 10 in this case. So this one is going to give us 11 uh, volt per 10, which is the same answer. So as long we are dealing with the exact values, we are going to obtain the same answer. So it can be taken either from the primary or it can be taken from the secondary. That is the idea of calculating the voltage per 10 in this case. So that is uh, what we're supposed to have 10 marks for that 10 marks, which is fine. Actually it's fine under exam.